Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go over energy in general. Uh, energy is looking pretty good, looks like it's starting to turn up. Uh, I'm gonna show you some, I will call it performance comparisons in different energy sectors. I'm gonna show you some charts uh, of some of the companies and some, some of the commodities. Uh, and we're gonna kind of look at everything as a big picture energy view. We're gonna look at oil, uranium, uh, solar, and those are the ones we're going to focus on in this in this presentation, at least. So here we go. And again, this is not financial advice; it's just my financial opinion. So first, we're going to start. I got this presentation here. It's called Energy, and I just threw a bunch of companies in to compare. Uh, these are some of my favorite companies over here: uh, Bannerman Energy, Deep Yellow, Encore Energy, Global Atomic, and Forces Metals. And I took a one-year approach and just said, okay, what do these things look like? Are they correlated? Um, which ones are kind of giving the extra juice, so to speak? And I think all of these are very good companies. I own all of them. And I own a, a lot more than just this in the uranium sector. But a lot of them have returned quite well over the past year. Uh, these are incredible returns. And really, we went from like a dead period in September, November, and it really started to take off. Uh, Forces Metals looks like it has some of the most widespread volatility or, or the movements are the most volatile. So that's one that I got some money into. Uh, Encore Energy seems to do pretty well. Uh, it's in the purple, and it's just continuing quite steadily to move up. That's in the second. We'll call it the second position here. The third is Global Atomic. Uh, and then last is Deep Yellow, kind of the laggard. But I still buy the laggard sometimes because it hasn't broken out of its pattern yet. And we'll, we'll see that on some other charts that I'll show later, later here. Now, in, in oil, the returns have actually beaten uranium uh, on a year. It do doesn't mean that this is going to continue. I'm, I'm just looking at a year. The average here is probably around, you know, 275, 250, somewhere in there, depending on how you look at it. Here is, is a little bit more, uh, 390, 390, 560, and 630 uh, over a year. Uh, these are some of my top performers. Uh, Crew Energy, there's a couple other. I, I own a bunch more uh, than this that have also done very well. And looking at these... Uh, Tetra Technologies is an energy service company, but all these are some of my favorite, and they've done incredibly well over the past year. Uh, looking at some of the solar stuff, this stuff gets insane. I mean, Sunworks is up 924%, and it's pulled back massively. This move was ridiculous. This entire move going up was incredible. Same with SOL or Ren Renasola. This thing's gone up dramatically as well. And they've all pulled back quite dramatically and are kind of in a period where I think they might be good to start looking at again. But these are incredibly volatile. Uh, they've gone up very nicely. And I think this is a sector that we want to look at uh, to get a little bit of exposure to. Even if you guys are hardcore commodity guys, I still think they're going to dump money into this sector. Now, here's technology just to show you. Um, comparisons. I've got Tesla, Apple, Trade Desk, Roku, and Amazon. And this is over the past year. And we, the commodities are vastly outperforming these guys, but we are taking more risk. Looks like Roku is probably the best of the, of the bunch. And I am not investing in technology. I just wanted to show you this as a comparison of returns. And here are all of them kind of grouped together. This is oil with SM Energy, uranium. Uh, Renasola is a solar company. Fuel cell energy is more of a hydrogen fuel cell. And I put Global Atomic in there. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a correlation. Obviously, I can see a correlation between these two renewables. But this also went up to SM Energy, and it kind of went sideways it, it it matches it somewhat, and then this was these were pulling back. SM Energy was pulling back, but it's just a strong pullback. So all these are they're all pretty correlated because we've had some pretty good sideways movements in uranium and oil, 
uh, we've been in these pullbacks, and so has solar. So I'm hoping that all these kind of link up for a move higher here at some point. Now, looking at some of the some of the this, I, I created these just to give you kind of an easy way to look at something. Um, I think we are perhaps here at a market top pretty soon, or we're just in front of it, somewhere in this range here for the market. Commodities like to follow this green line, which is the economy. And you can see which ones are in favor here. Staples, energy, and healthcare are the, the, one, the sectors that I'd probably look at. And what I have here is energy type companies. And th these are the commodities themselves. So this is West Texas Intermediate Crude. And you can see we broke the downtrend and we're back testing. And what do we do on the back test retest? We buy the back test or retest. And that's where we're at right now. And I think we're going to probably start heading higher at any point. But this is a big uh, over 10 year downtrend line that broke. And this is going to look fantastic on the, on the way up. Natural gas, same thing. Big old. 2008 trends are breaking to the upside. Looks fantastic. And here's uranium on the lower right. We've got this descending wedge pattern that we broke to the upside. We've been going sideways, and this thing looks like we're ready to, to break and move higher at any point. So I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also very patient. And I've been accumulating natural gas, oil, and uranium sectors. Now, looking at oil, and kind of diving in, I've got oil on the left. That's that that retest. We're seeing the same retest in SM Energy, Centennial Development, and Northern Oil and Gas. I just kind of randomly chose these. Uh, these are not recommendations. They're the the stuff I own, but you guys can do whatever you want. Here's the 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 downtrend line. We're doing the retest with SM Energy, and what do we do with the retests? Uh, I like to usually buy them. So I, I think I'm looking for a big move higher out of SM Energy. Uh, Centennial Development looks like we have a reverse head and shoulder almost, like a shoulder, head, shoulder type pattern. Came up, back tested, and I think we're probably going to head head on higher. Uh, I know a lot of people, they have all these strict rules on what a head and shoulder is or strict rules on a cup and handle because you could say this is a cup and handle pattern that came up, came down. But uh, irrespective, the valuations are good on oil. Uh, we are breaking down trend lines here all over the place. And this one's more of a flat. And I think we're going to head a lot higher on, on all these. Now, looking at uranium, to give, you, give yourself a couple of companies to look at if you guys want. Uh, I've got the price of uranium on the upper left. Looks very good. Descending wedge going on up. Encore Energy is one of my favorite companies. It looks like it's doing this big bowl and then kind of like a handle type pattern. And then we'll break and see where it goes. That, that this could be exciting. Uh, it's the same pattern in deep yellow, just a lot lower. So I'm, I'm looking for this move to break on up. So Encore, deep yellow, and then Baseload is an exploration company. These guys are develop, basically uh, developers, developing mines, and these, this guy's a explorer. M much more risk here, but I do own Baseload, and it looks like we're coming out of this pattern here. Uh, hopefully we can see it move on higher. Uh, next, I've got solar and rare earth metals. Now, I've got rare earth here on the upper left. This is REMX. On the right is TAN. These are both ETFs. I bought REMX in this section here. I cost averaged in, I wrote it on up, and I sold it right here and left my profits to ride. I put a large amount here and wrote it on up and let the profits ride. Now I'm just riding with my profits. I took my original amount and put it in here, in this lower right-hand side here, uh, in TAN, because the patterns are, what I would say, identical. Uh, this is your triple hump. This is your, your triple hump here. This one's just skewed upward. We've got the number one, two, three. We pull back to one, two, and this is, this is TAN is uh, more volatile. It's, it's, it's magnified, the moves. Um, so these moves, if you look at the moves in here, um, they're not nearly as large and as magnified as TAN because you can see these moves coming in and, and these, this is all kind of broken up and a little bit more drawn out here than, than here. This is a little more compressed. But uh, this little move there is this little move there. We come on up, we come on up and over, we come on up and over. 
And then I think right now we're about to go into a couple days where we might go sideways and then we launch. We launch out of this downtrend line. And I was looking at the previous ones and some of the most volatile of the bunch, uh, S-U-N-W and S-O-L. Now, these are high risk, all right? I put a lot of money in TAN. And again, this is not recommendations. I'm just telling you what I am doing. With this same pattern, I'm expecting this to break to the upside and, and, and go up similar to this. Now, if this move is similar and we head up above this these highs here, it's 95, we went from 84 to 115. I think this is going to be an, a, a bigger move. I think we could go from 84 to 140 or 50 or something. Hopefully. Now, these guys are down here are crazy. They are incredibly volatile. I mean, this thing peaked out at $26 and came all the way back to $758. This jump at the beginning was all the way down at like $2 to, to $24. This one here is like five bucks down here and all the way up to $34 in a couple months. Now, we're coming on down and we're coming on down. And I think we're ready to launch and we're seeing confluence with the overall ETF. Now, if money kind of comes into the ETF, these guys are in this ETF and they're the small, the small ones. So I'm using it for extra leverage. And the setup, I think, is there. And I'm, I'm hoping this breaks to the upside. Remember, this is probabilities. It's not 100% outcomes. And I'm looking at these and ready for this break where I'm going to add in. If it breaks, I'm just going to buy into that strength and try to ride it as high as I can. And what my, what my goal is here is, is I'm trying to, I'm going to, I'm going to take some money. I'm going to try to ride these things up. Hopefully we can get a couple hundred percent even, maybe we'll see, ride it on up and then, uh, rotate money. I should say, sell my base money, let the profits all ride to create and establish positions to just let it do a free ride. Take that base money. I'll do it with tan and I'm going to continue to build. Uh, if we can get this to, to roll on up in TAN, then I'll have a big position in REMX because I got a 30% return on that, uh, which was a pretty good amount. I'm rolling into tan. If tan can do another 50, 60%, you know, in the short term over the next couple months, and then some of these small ones, if I, I'm putting a lot less money in those because high risk, uh, and hopefully those take off and I can put them into free rides. Now, it may not work out. It may not work out that way. I might lose money and maybe we pull back. It's a, it's a, it's a, possi it's a possibility. But I like the confluence of all the energy sectors lining up. I like the dollar getting weaker. Uh, and it looks like we're going to move higher. I'm also looking at other areas. The S&P 500 looks like it wants to go up. Uh, NASDAQ looks like it wants to go up. So I don't see where I could get dragged down necessarily if everything's kind of moving up. So I don't know if these are tied to the, to the technology area or if it's tied to the energy area. It's, it's, it's tough to, to know. Now, if technology goes up and it's tied to technology, I win. If, it ties, if it's tied to oil, oil looks like it's good and ready to, to try to move up higher as well. So ho hopefully it works out that way. And hopefully I can put these into free rides with some good good amounts in there. So if you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. Uh, thanks for listening. This is Finding Value.